In chemistry, the amount of product you get from a chemical reaction is known as the yield, which we can measure in grams or moles. To be more precise though, we can use the terms actual yield to describe the amount we actually get when we carry out the reaction, and theoretical yield to describe the yield we'd expect to get based on our calculations. For example, if we reacted 2 grams of hydrogen with 16 grams of oxygen, then we should get 18 grams of water. So that's our theoretical yield, because 2 plus 16 equals 18. In practice though, it might not make quite that much. For example, we could end up with only 15 grams or so, and we'd call that our actual yield. Now, there's a whole range of reasons why we might not make as much product as we expect, but there are three particularly common ones that you need to know. The first is that the reactants might not all react. So at the end, some of the mixture will still be reactants. This could happen if the reaction is particularly slow, so it just hasn't had enough time to fully react, or because it's a reversible reaction and it's reached equilibrium. For example, if we reacted nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia, it wouldn't ever go to completion because it's a reversible reaction. So some of the ammonia would keep breaking back down into nitrogen and hydrogen. The second reason is that there could be side reactions, which is where the reactants react to produce a different product than the one that we were expecting. For example, if we were looking at the same reaction as a minute ago, some of the nitrogen might react with oxygen from the air to make nitrogen dioxide, instead of going to make ammonia like we wanted it to. And so it would end up with less ammonia than we expected. The third reason is more simple. We could just lose some of the product during the process. For example, gaseous products can float off and escape. Or if we were filtering something, we might not capture all of the liquid or solid. To understand what we mean, imagine that we were using a filter paper and funnel to filter out a solution and separate the liquid and solid. If our aim was to capture all of the liquid, it would be difficult because there would be some liquid left in the test tube, some left on the solid, and also some left behind on the filter paper itself and so we're not actually getting all of the liquid into the test tube like we want. Similarly, if we wanted to capture the solid, we'd also struggle because we'd probably end up leaving some behind when we try to scrape it off the filter paper at the end. The last thing we need to do is cover how to calculate the percentage yield, which tells us what percentage of the theoretical yield we actually got. To do this, we take the actual yield and divide it by the theoretical yield, and then we multiply it all by 100 to give us a percentage. So it can range from 0% if we don't get any product, all the way to 100% if we get all the product that we predicted. So if we think back to our reaction from the start of the video, where we reacted 2 grams of hydrogen with 16 grams of oxygen, we predicted that our theoretical yield would be 18 grams. But we said that our actual yield was only 15 grams. So to find the percentage yield, we do 15 divided by 18 and then times it by 100, which would give us 83.3%. Or in other words, we got 83.3% of what we expected. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.